My mother grew up in a little country town outside of Montgomery called Wetumpka, and as a child, she was required to work in a home. And my father would always tell the story about um, having to walk five miles to school every day. Son, you're really lucky. I had to walk five miles to school every day. To which I would respond, well, Dad, that's why your feet are so big. You had all the walking to do. And he would say, boy, don't get smart with me. But my mother told a story that embarrassed me as a little middle class child because she said she was working as a child maid and, and the woman was kind to her in the home and said, Maggie, when you finish your work, you can go into the library and read. And mother would do just that. And then the woman said, take the book home, bring it back when you finish. All of a sudden, my mother's girlfriends became very upset with her because they would want her to come out and play. And instead, she wanted to continue reading the book. And at that point, she began to understand the difference, the growing difference between herself and her girlfriends. And here was the difference. She said, the more she read, the better a reader she became. And the better a reader she became, the more she enjoyed the experience. And the more she enjoyed reading, the more reading she did. The problem with her girlfriends was they never learned to read well enough to enjoy the experience. And it was at that point mother knew exactly what she wanted to do for the rest of her life, Teresa. She became an English teacher because she saw the power of language. She saw how she learned to write well and to speak well and to think critically and she began to read history and to put a life in perspective and people would say that's a special little girl. And for over 40 years she taught. We in America understand the importance of building reading skills but we're going to need to find ways to help children first of all to read more, to learn to read with understanding to learn to use the reading and writing to relate to their lives in such a way that they get into the habit of reading. Because here is what's critical. Once a child learns to read, you can never take it from her. She will always know how to read. We need to rethink how we work with K through 12 on the one hand and how we teach and learn in our colleges. Did you know that according to many national agencies, the first year of college science is, all those courses are called weed out courses. How many of you know somebody, a relative or friend who started off in pre-med or engineering and changed their majors? Most Americans, right? And that is a challenge. And so what we say to the higher education community is we need to rethink teaching and learning in that first year. And that's what I am saying also to K through 12 that higher ed and K through 12 need to work even more collaboratively. I was delighted to hear your commissioner say you and Indiana are talking across sectors more, K through 12, pre-K through 12, your community colleges, your four-year institutions and beyond, because we need that. The reason that I, as a college president, spend a lot of time focused on K through 12, working with state school boards, working with superintendents, working with math and English teachers, is that I understand that as K through 12 goes, so will America. And that unless we get it right in pre-K through 12, we will not have the strength of teaching and learning at the next level.